Question 45. Sketch the graph of f of x equals x minus 4 all over x squared minus 3x minus 4. This is a rational graph, and with any uh, rational function, we should see if uh, it can be simplified. So in order to simplify, we want to factor the top and bottom. The bottom is already a binomial factor. It cannot be factored further. Sorry, the top. The bottom can be factored. I think it would be x minus 4 and x plus 1. So we have a common factor of x minus 4. So we can cancel out that common factor of x minus 4. So our equation simplifies to 1 over x plus 1. But we have to remember that x cannot equal 4. So with any common factor that occurs once on the numerator and the denominator, that, is, that would be a whole. So there is a whole at x equals 4. So to find the coordinates of the whole, because we'd want to plot the whole, we need to get the y-coordinate. So when I substitute that in, if I substitute it into my original equation, I would get 4 minus 4, which is 0, 4 minus 4, which is 0. I'd get 0 divided by 0, which is an indeterminate form. So you'll learn later that this is a removable uh, discontinuity. So we always substitute it into the simplified form. So the form over right here. So if we substitute that into the simplified form, we're going to get uh, uh, y equal to 1 over 4 plus 1 which is one-fifth. So the whole has coordinates of four comma one-fifth. For the other uh, part of our graph, the x plus one in the denominator, uh, that would uh, be a vertical asymptote. So remember to solve your factor. So we have a vertical asymptote, vertical asymptote of x equals minus 1. All right, so it's very important uh, that we establish both of these facts. So I'm going to, they have the scale already labeled for us, so I'm going to draw in my asymptote. And when I draw in my asymptote, uh, first I guess I'll zoom in, and I'll make that nice dashed line at minus 1. So, nice dashed line at minus 1. And that is my vertical asymptote. And also, uh, the 4 comma 1 fifth I'm going to put a hole. So here we have 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's x of 4. And then I want to go a fifth of the way up. So a fifth of the way up, I'm going to have uh, this hole here. OK? It's a little bit more than a fifth, but I think it'll do. Just uh, when to cheat, always write the coordinates next to your hole. 4 comma 1 fifth. And then we could get away with that. All right, so the next thing that I want to do is, the next thing I want to do is um, think about the graph of x plus 1. And I think I'm going to do this as a, as a transformation of 1 over x. I want you to recall this graph. If you recall the graph of y equals 1 over x, it looks as follows. It has a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. It has a horizontal asymptote of y equals 0. 
and then it has this shape. I think two important points are one comma one. So over one, up one, and right, you could easily get this by substitution. And another common point is negative one, negative one. And if we were to graph this, right, the reciprocal graph for small x, we get big values of y. And for larger x, we get small values of y. So this graph of a reciprocal function, it looks kind of the same in the negative for uh, very negative large values. I'll say it like that. Large negative values. We get small values, and then we go asymptotic with the axis. Now the reason I want to show this graph is because we can look at our graph of x plus 1 as a transformation. And just to make sure we clearly know these points are 1 comma 1 and negative 1 negative 1. So if we look at this as a transformation we know that it is a shift of one unit to the left. So it's a horizontal shift of one unit to the left and I'm just going to uh, put that in there. Horizontal shift one unit to the left. Now the thing about moving one unit to the left is the asymptote would also move and as you can see that's consistent with what we already said. We said we had an asymptote at minus one which is correct. So if we move this point right here one unit to the left it's going to go to zero one right it'll go to zero one so the next point I'm going to draw on here is zero one so I'll zoom in a little bit for that just to just to make sure that uh, we are drawing it as accurately as we can so we have a point at oops we have a point at zero one and let's try that again so we have a point at zero one and then of course the point at negative one negative one would move one to the left as well so the only other things we really want to show is the asymptotic behavior and don't forget if you're shifting to the left there really is a horizontal asymptote right on the x-axis here okay we want to obey that behavior so how does it go? If we look at our parent function, we will draw our graph as follows. So we're just obeying both the vertical and horizontal asymptotic behavior. And I think this is a wonderful graph of the function we were asked to draw.